Since the beginning of time, humans have uncovered a multitude of indisputable truths. Water is the essence of life. The earth revolves around the sun. And most crucially, you don't sleep on the kid. Okay. Do any bear, oh. any bear, oh, that's, that's it. it. That's it. This last truth couldn't have been more verified than by Mango's run at Smash Summit 14. Boasting top talent from across the globe, Summit 14 was absolutely stacked, even by the Invitational's mighty standards. And although many top players threw their hat in the ring, there could only be one victor. We've all heard of Loser's Bracket Mango, a player who keeps his nation on the edge of their seats with every Loser's Bracket set survived. But what about a Mango who just doesn't lose? Who doesn't go to a single Game 5? Today, we're giving early thanks to Mango, as we discuss just what made Mango's dominant run at Smash Summit 14 so special. Through the first two days of Summit 14, Mango stuck to his guns literally, by focusing his gameplay solely on his Falco. Starting things off in Group C, Mango shocked fans around the world with a dominant display of exactly what the bird can do. For his first match of the weekend, Mango would face off against Sunsei, one of the greatest Fox players from the Great White North, and a new household name after a compelling run at the Big House 10. While the first three games of the set were relatively close, each having both players down to their final stocks and Sunsei even taking Game 3, Mango would grab a swift three-stock recovery to close out the set 3-1. It, it's yeah, it's yeah, the ledge dashes. It's like the monkey's paw. It's just like insane wave dashes, but your ledges are a bit off. Oh, and speaking of your ledges being a bit off. After dispatching Sunsei, Mango would go on to face Kadoran in their next round robin pool. And unfortunately for the number 10 ranked Marth main, Mango would proceed to 3 0 Kadoran with ease. Off, jump back, back air. Right. And then instead, Mango does the mix up there, even with the invincibility. Oh, oh yeah, that'll do it. Sitting 2-0 for the day, Mango would then have to wait nearly 24 hours to finish his pool and face off against Leffen. As Saturday came, Mango and Leffen strapped in for yet another banger set. As the two began their set, their head-to-head -head count sat at 10-11 in Leffen's favor. Throughout the first game, it was clear that Leffen had the upper hand, even after taking some time off from Melee to focus on Guilty Gear Strive. The first game wasn't exactly close, as Leffen repeatedly won all of the out of shield situations in the game and quickly eliminated Mango's stocks left and right. Meanwhile, Mango was in a struggle, unable to link together long string combos and even SDing on his last stock as he tried to ledge dash on Battlefield's notoriously fickle ledges. He's playing that platform so well, Mango just like... Mm. Yeah, but Leffen's winning all of these shield situations. Any anytime yeah. Mango touches Leffen's shield, he goes for one or two hits and backs away because he's afraid of shining out of shield. After losing game one, the GOAT honed in on what was missing from his gameplay and what he was doing wrong, and quickly course corrected for the following three games, something that would be kind of a pattern for Mango at this summit. Mango immediately counterpicked Leffen to Pokemon Stadium, a favorite of both players. Taking three unanswered stocks barely a minute into the match, Mango was showing the poise and precision he would play with for the duration of the weekend. Yeah, it's, not, it's not doing too much. Work. It's not doing too much. Leffen just holding shield. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. oh, that was actually. Oh, but you just ran right in there. Thought he had more invincibility than he did. Ow. Just the very small, wimpy jump into back air. See ya. After a commanding Game 2, Leffen counterpicked to Dreamland, where the two would battle it out with plenty of space for both players to move around. Mango took an early lead, and held on to it for the majority of the match. However, Leffen was quick to even the stock count, with two incredibly precise and quick stocks thanks to some tight shines. With the game tied one stock to one, the two would exchange neutral approaches and both fumble some crucial conversions, but it was Mango who came out on top, after getting Leffen off stage and covering his recovery options with well-placed lasers and his patented down smash at ledge. Risky. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and he has one shot, nice oh, down Mango's smash. Mango's so good at that down smash. Yeah. He doesn't let you- Up 2-1 in the set, Mango would face Leffen once again on Dreamland, and this game was more of the same from what we've seen so far this set. Although Leffen played well, Mango was two steps ahead of him at all times, quickly taking a three stock to one lead. And even though Leffen managed to clean up one of those stocks, it was too little too late for the Swede, and Mango advanced 3-1. So yeah. clean. If Leffen wants a shot at winners, immediately he has to win this. Otherwise he's going to the gauntlet. Oh no. Oh, oh no. my god. Good stuff. Forcing Leffen to enter the gauntlet stage while he sat proudly in the winner's side of the final bracket. On Sunday in the final bracket, Mango would first face off against the reigning Summit champion IBDW. In another nail-biting Fox vs. Falco set, the two would battle it out to see who remains in winners and who would drop to the terrifyingly stacked loser's side of the bracket. 
In a staggering 15-3 lifetime head-to-head, -head, Mango would look to stretch his outstanding win rate over IBDW even further. To start things out, the two would face off on Battlefield, a common starter stage and New York classic at which IBDW would feel more at home. This fact showed, as IBDW would take an early stock lead in the game. However, anytime Cody pulled ahead, Mango was quick to answer back. The two would go back and forth, trading hits and stocks for the duration of the match. But unfortunately for IBDW, once Mango pulled ahead, he held the lead with a gorilla's grip. It's like, yeah, you can see oh, Mango, he's funny. This is oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah, Mango hits like a monster. On display this set was more of Mango's incredible punish game with Falco, specifically on Fox, who he combos with relative ease due to his weight compared to the rest of the cast. The second game would showcase more back and forth gameplay from the two veterans, yet once Mango found his footing on Final Destination, it was curtains for IBDW. Okay. That is the worst feeling as fuck getting hit by that side B when they he's do the dead. slide on the side B. He's down there, yeah. He, he, he's smash. playing with the food No now. more lasers. Yeah. No more lasers. I'm actually surprised. Oh, right. Mango had no problems holding on to and even extending his lead, a story that would tell itself again and again throughout the final bracket. After taking a close game three, IBDW managed to get on the board, making the set count 2-1 still in Mango's favor, but was practically knocked off as soon as he got on with back-to-back -back stage counterpicks from Mango. Game 4 had Mango pick his tried and true Pokemon Stadium against IBDW's Fox. Please don't fool, he's gonna jump again. Uh, okay, wait. The level laser and the devil. Oh, oh, wow. one, way. Still one, one more, more chance. chance. Oh. After an electrifying 3 1 set with IBDW, Mango would next have to face off against Hungrybox's Jigglypuff. And for the first time in a tournament set for the weekend, we'd see Mango's Fox instead of his Falco. In the two players' storied rivalry, some critical research done by Team Liquid's Pliff and Melee Stats' Edwin Budding has unveiled that the head-to-head -head set count at the time of this set was a staggering 45-40 in Mango's favor. Looking to gain another victory in their decades-spanning matchup, Mango sought out Fox's impeccable punish and neutral game on the floating balloon. Starting once again on Battlefield, Mango acted like his usual self in Game 1, running headstrong into Hungrybox and going full aggro. As we have come accustomed to seeing in recent years, this approach didn't exactly work out for Mango, as Hungrybox eats aggression and spits out wins, resulting in Hungrybox taking a 1-0 lead for the set. However, it's the next three games here that are so interesting, as Mango utilized his lasers in a strong mental game to control the pace of the match, the latter being a job typically reserved by Hungrybox. Taking Hbox to Pokemon Stadium for Game 2, Hungrybox would take an early stock lead, but Mango would not let this shake his mental game. On the mic, Mango said he prefers to warm up with Puff players and continuously lose games, all while reminding himself and keeping mental notes on which approaches will get him killed so that he gets it out of his system and can come into the tournament set with a clear head. This tactic seemed to bleed over into their set. However, once Mango realized he needed to get in the zone and focus up, he showed that he was impervious to Hungrybox's mind games. Mentally keeping himself in check, Mango would show calm and disciplined approaches to Hungrybox, resulting in him tying the set 1-1. Oh. Whoa, what a chip Mango yeah. wave dashing forward twice. Oh, he wow. catches. Okay, he's yeah, been killing him on the wave dash. In a tale as old as time, Hungrybox would then counterpick Mango to his best stage dreamland. However, even with the sanctuary of a large stage to fly around on and huge blast zones, Mango showed up not just to play, but to win. While the two would battle it out in a close game, once Mango found the lead, he held onto it with everything in his power, even so far as to showcase the DI of the gods, as he was rested midway through the game, yet not only didn't die, but made it back to the stage with a high side B recovery while utilizing Fox's drift to make it back to ledge. Mango has oh, been Mango, so he did that! Wait, 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 Mango, 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 after such a stunning recovery, the momentum was firmly in Mango's court, and he would take it to another victory, bringing the set now to 2-1 in his favor. Those were, the, those, that's the, those were the Taj lasers. That's right. Dude. Oh my oh god. My oh my god. god. Oh my god. god. Hungrybox would once again take Mango to Dreamland for Game 4, and once again got a rest that Mango miraculously DI'd to survive, and yet again did a high side B and used Fox's drift to make it back to the stage. Oh! 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 Having shown Hbox that he can't just rely on rest to get the job done at early percents, Mango then began to rush the Jigglypuff down, before disengaging to find his footing and fire some lasers. After taking an early stock lead in Game 4, Mango would remain one step ahead of Hgod for the remainder of the game and indeed the set. Slow this down. Yeah, Hbox knows what Mango's looking for too. Oh! Oh! He just catches a jump in! Oh!
dropping Hungrybox down to loser's bracket and advancing himself to the winner's finals, where he would face off against a somewhat recent bracket demon in Amsa. Still reeling from their grand final set at the Big House 10, Mango would be looking to add another victory to their head-to-head -head set count, which Amsa led with a staggering 8-3 lead. Once again relying on his fox over his falco, Mango would face off against Omsa's Red Yoshi, with Game 1 taking us yet again to Battlefield. While the gameplay from both players was nothing short of the highest level in today's melee scene, Omsa seemed to remain just out of reach for Mango, staying alive to absurd percents and punishing Mango with parries galore and combos that seemed to always end with Mango offstage, setting up for a flowchart edgeguard. Oh, yeah, you gotta be careful hit <laughs> Yoshi's double jump like that. Oh, he, where are you going on there? No, Mango. He just did a After some quick and quiet introspection, Mango shook the loss off, no stranger to being down 1-0 in a set this weekend, and took Amsa to Pokemon Stadium for game two. Unlike the first game, Mango applied expert pressure and a precise game plan to gain and keep a lead versus the Red Yoshi. Although Amsa seemed to claw his way back in the endgame of the match, it wasn't quite enough to quell Mango's intense pressure, and Mango found himself evening the game count to 1-1. One, one. Like, respect what he does when he's in shield because he can't jump out of it. Yeah. So then you do that, once he rolls, wave shine that That's what I'd be doing. In keeping with the pattern he'd set in sets prior this tournament, Mango would go down 1-0 after the first game, then find himself adjusting and taking the next three, refusing to play a game 5 set. Amsa showed prowess and finesse in both games 3 and 4, taking Mango to Dreamland and Final Destination respectively, but unfortunately for Amsa, he couldn't seem to find a way in. And after a hard-fought set, Mango yet again advanced in the winner's bracket. Oh, oh that's it, right? Oh, no, break the armor. Yeah. Wow, he went for the double up air. Oh, Smash gets crowd. Mango started popping yeah, off, but it ready. wasn't a kill. Still that's going to be it. 3-1 right. Mango. <laughs> now happily sitting on the winner's side of Grand Finals, where he would await his opponent from the loser's bracket while having a set to spare. After having run through a gauntlet of opponents after facing Mango earlier in the day, IBDW went on the loser's run of his life, meeting Mango for a second time this weekend, this time in Grands. Unfortunately for the reigning champion of both Summits 12 and 13, it seems that he somewhat ran out of steam for the Grand Finals set, and Mango cleaned up his victory with a solid 3-0 win over IBDW, as covered in our Smash Summit 14 recap video. So, the GOAT once again claims another title to strengthen his claim as the greatest player in Melee's long and storied history. Mango showed yet again that even after a decade and a half, he's still got that god in him. So there you have it, another tournament down and another victory written in the Book of Mango. But what was your favorite moment of Smash Summit 14? Was it the skits, the round robin pools, or perhaps another set or run that didn't get covered? We're looking at you, JMook vs. HBox. Sound off in the comments below with your favorite takeaway from Smash Summit 14, and be sure to like and subscribe to PG Stats for more exhilarating melee content.